Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from BlenderDiplom.com. My name is Jonathan Lampel, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make custom lens flares inside of Blender. So I'm not even going to be using the 3D view at all, I'm just going to be using the compositor. So you can input an image, you can input a video, uh, even a render, anything you want. Just make sure that you have use nodes and backdrop checked and you should be good to go. So uh, all I just started with was this text and nothing else. And from that, I'm going to make lens flares exactly like you saw them in the preview at the beginning. So first of all, I'm going to be doing this in three steps. I'm going to make the kind of fog glare around the light. I'm going to be making the kind of stylized streaks. And then I'm going to be adding a couple uh, uh, more effects to just make it more appealing and more a little bit more realistic. And of course, this will be fully customizable and you can make anything really that you want with it. Uh, you can take it a lot farther than I have and make some really cool lens flares. Uh, if you do, I'd love to see them. But for now, uh, we're just going to stick with it. A simple version and uh, I hope you learned something from it. So getting started, I don't actually want to use this image uh, at all. We're going to start completely from scratch with a black canvas. So I'm going to take a color and mix node and just mix this with solid black. And you can see that here that we just are starting with absolutely nothing. Uh, the way I'm navigating, by the way, is just Shift A is your add menu and your Control Shift click on a node uh, instantly connects the viewer node to it. So that's how I'm navigating around. And now to get started, uh, we need a pinpoint of a of a light source for the glare or the flare. And so I'm going to be using an ellipse mask. So that can be found under the matte and ellipse mask. There we go. And I'm going to plug this into the mask. Um, and the reason I'm doing this is so that we have the right size. Uh, I could just put in a input RGB, um, but that doesn't include a size. That's only a color. So um, this will just make sure that it's the exact same uh, size as the first image, so we don't have any weird scaling going on. So first of all, we just need a very, very small point of light. And so I'm going to be using a scale of about 0.05 in both directions. And excuse me, a little bit smaller than that. 0 0.005, my bad. So you can see that it's very small. And to get the kind of fog glow, I'm just going to be using a filter and a blur. And if I go ahead and I um, kind of blur this, you see that the larger it gets, the darker and darker it gets. And this can be an issue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a normalize node found under the vector menu. And what that does is it takes the um, image, converts it to a black and white, which it already was black and white to begin with, um, but the brightest value is going to be solid white and the darkest value is going to be solid black. Uh, so regardless of your kind of uh, range of value, it just all puts it all, or it, that didn't make any sense, it just converts it to values of between 0 and 1. Um, so you can see that even though it's very dark, it just takes the bright spots and makes it completely white, and the dark spots, it leaves black. Um, so now we can go ahead and blur this however we want, but even if we blur it a lot, the Gaussian blur does not look very good. You can see it's just kind of an ugly square. So I'm going to be using Fast Gaussian, and that gives us a nice circle. And I'm going to click Relative, so I have a little bit more control over the percentage. I don't know, I just find that easier. And I'm going to blur this about 5% in both directions. Now it's kind of oblong right now, so I'm going to choose the X Aspect Correction, and that's just going to correct it and make it a perfect circle. So that's the first step, and I'm going to do this two more times to give it a nice layer. Um, one of the best ways to make things more appealing is just adding more layers and making it more natural. So that's what I'm going to do with this. I'm going to plug that in and I'm going to blur this 15 times. 15%. And I can collapse these to make give me more room. 
And lastly, I'm going to blur this one 25%. Uh, actually, I'm going to go with 30. Make it pretty big. Alright, so now we have our small, medium, and large blur. And now we can layer them together quite easily with a color and mix node. Not that one. First, I'm going to add the top two. And now you can see it's just kind of adding them together. And you can make it... Um, you know, as bright as you want. With the factor here, it's only going to add 75% uh, of this second value. And likewise, I can duplicate this and add the result of that to the larger blur. And now we have a nice kind of halo um, fog glow effect. So with that done, um, I'm going to now make the stylized streaks and that's really easy to do. All I need to do to accomplish that is just duplicate these. Oh, not that one. Plug that in. So now we have our regular kind of blur. But instead of having it be a circle, I'm just going to uh, blur it maybe 35 times in the x direction, but only 1% in the y direction. And actually, I'm going to turn off the aspect correction so that it kind of streaks across across the screen there. And maybe 0.5 so it's not so thick. There we go, that's looking good. And now to get you know two of them, or however many of them you want, I'm just going to take the distort transform. Actually, I'm going to use the translate. And I'm going to translate it up five units on the Y. Duplicate that down. Make that one negative five units. So that we have one for the top and one for the bottom. And then simply, I can just duplicate this. Simply add them together like we've been doing before. And there we go. Make sure that's turned to one so it's even. And there we have that. So you can see that when we add these two together, we have a nice light streak going across the screen. We have a nice glow. And now we only need to add a few more things and kind of clean it up uh, for the end result. So I'm going to collapse those. And now I'm going to add a filter and glare node to add some kind of light streaks. So uh, you can see it doesn't really do anything, but if I turn the threshold all the way down to zero, you can see that we have a nice little star. And if I turn the fade up a little bit, you can see how, um, how it kind of gets a little bit larger. And if I turn this to low quality, it gets even more um, bright, I suppose, or it gets longer. It dims a little bit, but that's all right. It's not going to affect the final output. I could turn off the color modulation. I think that's what it's called. Um, so we don't have those little spots. And finally, I'm going to add more streaks. Just to make it look a little bit more natural. About 15. And finally, I'm going to take that and add it to what we have here. You can see we're just using a ton of add nodes. So that gives us a nice little, um, some nice streaks inside of there. Now you might want them to be a little bit brighter. So you can turn up the value. There we go. And lastly, um, I'm going, well, actually I'll save that till after we move it because, well, you'll see in a second. So now I'm ready to add this lens flare to the initial result. So I'm going to take yet another add, plug in the original image, which remember is just the text. 
oh, that's right, uh, and plug in the result there. And now you can see that I added it quite nicely. However, that's just kind of smack in the middle. And it's really easy to kind of move it because with our ellipse mask, you can see if we kind of preview it here, I can move this over to the left and a little bit up using the X and Y. And you can see that you can move it however you want and it works quite well. Um, I'm going to take some of these ads um, down a little bit because so I think it's a little bit too bright in my opinion. There we go, that's looking a little bit nicer. And finally, uh, now that it's not in the middle anymore, you can more easily see the effect when I put in a filter and glare note, another one, but instead of streaks, this time I'm going to be using ghosts. And what that does is kind of simulate a sort of lens. Uh, if I turn the mix value all the way to 1, that's just going to give me simply the result of this node and nothing else. So I can more easily tweak it without any, that distracting light. And I'm going to turn this color modulation all the way down. So that's not in the way. Uh, turn the iterations up a bit. And of course I could turn the threshold down. So you can play with this and see kind of what you like. Uh, the lower lower you have it, the brighter it's going to be. So I'm actually going to stay on the higher side of things, about 0.75. And then if I turn the mix back to, well first I can show you the difference between low, low quality, medium quality, and high quality. So that just defines um, more sharpness in the kind of glare effect there. And I don't really want this to affect the text, I just want it to affect the flare. So I'm going to put it in before the add node. So there we have our glare there. And as we kind of move this around, you can see that that automatically follows it. So that's really nice. Now I just need to turn the mix back down to zero so it's evenly added together. So we have that nice light streak going on. And now just to clean it up, I'm going to do some color correcting. So just color and color balance. And this is really good for lens flares because the lift, you can see if I change this, it's going to affect the outside or the more darker parts of the of the flare there. So I can make this a nice blue. And this, the gain, is going to affect the inside. So I could either make that a nice yellow, very soft, or I could make it a, another blue. Uh, it all de depends on what kind of effect you're going for. I think I'll go for kind of a soft yellow. And, you know, I'll move this back to where it was. Maybe give the this a little bit of a background so it's not kind of stuck on the black. So just real quick, I'm going to add a mix node and lighten. Turn this to kind of a blue, darker blue, about there. And add that instead of the text. And now you can see that the result is actually quite quite better looking. Um, I want to take down the saturation a bit, make it a little bit darker. And of course you can play with this all you want, but the uh, the idea was just to show you how to make these you know custom lens flares. And of course you can animate the movement of of these X and Ys. Just uh, go to key or the time you want and hit I over the over the boxes here to insert a keyframe. I'm not going to be doing that, but that's just exactly what I did um, to begin with. And um, also something you can do that's really cool is you can input a 
render layer, of course, so if you, you mask out a material, you could use that as an input for the flare as well. Uh, you could put in a movie clip of, you know, a dot moving around. You could put in a mask, and what's really cool about the mask is that you can actually uh, track the mask to footage, right? Uh, you can just make a small little circle mask, and if you have a video of a light source, um, you know, that you filmed with your camera, uh, you can track that mask to the footage, and then using that, um, you can automatically track the lens flare into your video. So that's really cool. And there's, so there's lots of uses, uh, totally customizable. You can even, um, one thing that might be kind of neat is if you take the streaks there um, and use a rotate node, you can kind of, oh, not that much. You can kind of rotate those. Um, you can do all sorts of cool things. Um, definitely up to your imagination. So I'm just going to leave you with this. Uh, I hope you learned something from it um, about the compositor or you know how to add some cool lens flares to your render that are a lot, a lot better than your normal glare node. And I hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching.